is. Ray Wershing gets set to tee it up and kick it off and start this finale. Jenny Duck at number 86, back deep for the Cowboys, looking into the sun and standing at about the two. And Wershing hangs it high, and it will be Duckett at the seven. He fumbles, lost it, and I don't know who got it. The Cowboys got it back. What a way to kick it off. What a way to start it. The Cowboys are lucky to maintain possession. Maybe that was being too relaxed. That's what happens when you get that relaxed. Duckett. He bumped up, boop, boop, boop. Well, he, got it, he got the handle on it just as he went down. Just in time. Carl Poe will start at one wide receiver in place of Tony Hill. And Gary Hogaboom is the Dallas quarterback. Mike Renfro wide to the left and Poe wide right. It's Dorsett behind Newsom. Dorsett gets the carry and has some room. Dorsett out of the pack. Tony Dorsett all the way out to the 29-yard line before Dwight Hicks brings it. First down, Dallas, their own 29. Cole is left, Renfro right this time. Boom fake, down the middle, Cosby complete. Two quick first down, the veteran group of Hicks, Wright, Williamson, and Watt. Dorsett. Backwards by Michael Carter. Hey, he goes. Now that worked for 15 yards, but the sweep didn't work. Going the opposite direction from Carter is not a bad idea. Carter again on a stop. Dorsett. He picked up the two he lost the play before. Watch Michael Carter down here in the pits, number 95, going against Tom Raverty. Boom, he just gets both those hands up. Look, look how strong he is. There's no way that you get any movement, but he just gives that whip around that arm deal and boom, right there in the hole. McLemore and Fuller have come into the 49er defense. That gives them six defensive backs. The shotgun, and here comes the blitz up the middle as the penalty marker is down. I don't think Dorsett ever saw the ball coming. The penalty flag was down. Usually when they go in that defense and bring in Jeff Fuller, he usually blitzes. He did on that one. Wayne Board, I believe, lined up offside. That's the thing. The guy can't you see, here's Board right here. Now, it looks side. like his head is Defense. over the ball. Defense. See, you go right there. See, he lined up with his head up over the ball in the neutral zone, they call that. That gives the Cowboys another down. That'll make it third and five. They're at the San Francisco 48. for Cosby. Inside the Giants in a key touchdown drive. Here's Hogaboom. And they hit by Board and by Dean. And it's over. Yeah, that was the old high-low and right in the middle. <laughs> Would be the next quarterback for Dallas. Of course, and he's the extra defensive back, but the one thing that he did, you know, he was a coach, and he coached and trained him. 49er 27. No score. But Dallas on the move quickly. Pelour is the quarterback. He moves Newsom and then drops to throw. Look out. Screen pass called at a very opportune time. Your set hammers down inside the 20. Ronnie Lott knocked him out of bounds. Those of you. Drake can put his helmet back on. That's usually a sign you're okay. Second and two from the 18, the 49er 18. Floor to Dorset. Dorset around the corner. Cuts back. The pursuit got him. Michael Walter was first out there. Dorset gets up sort of gingerly. A gain of one. Third and about a foot, it looks like. And Hogaboom is back in the game. The Jets. 37-10 over Cleveland. Denver. Denver won 11 games and didn't make the playoffs. First time that's ever happened. That's Newsom straight ahead. Ricky Ellis. 
Wilson was the first 49er. And I believe he got the first down. That was an interesting play, Pat. The way they're going to block Michael Carter to get a double team. Watch what they did. They're going to bring the, the tight end in. He comes in motion right here, and he's going to come in and trap here on Carter. Watch him here. You'll see him. Oh, it was the other side there. You see the double team they get? They brought the tight end in in motion. That was Fred Cornwell, and they double team with the center. Doug Cosby thinks they got it. I thought they got it. Now the referee agrees. He is Pat Haggerty. He's listed at 285, but he's a little bit more than three. Here's Dorsett. And he hammers down to about the 11. Ronnie Lott came up to hit him. Bill Walsh. It's been a long year for Bill. It's tough to defend, but it's been an injury-prone year and a, an up-and-down Sprints out, fires for Poe. Headed for the bench, and finally he heads back in on defense. He got hurt in practice day before yesterday. Now he doesn't know the defense. They're coming on a blitz. And there comes Newsom. Out of bounds inside the five by Ronnie Lott. I'll tell you, that's the guy that they're going to have to block today. They're going to have to block Steve Fuller. I mean, uh, uh, Jeff Fuller. He's coming right here. You know, and he comes in, and just just as Hogaboom gets rid of the ball, he gets hit. Watch Fuller right there coming through for a boom. He hits him just as he throws the ball. Most of the time in that defense, they do blitz Jeff Fuller. First and goal from the three. The Cowboys with two tight ends. They give to Dorsett. Penalty. Neutral zone. zone as you said Harlan Williamson was the culprit well you usually think it's going to be a lineman or a linebacker but in that case it was a strong safety because when you get down to the goal line that strong safety is also up on the line of scrimmage first down still Cornwell in motion fake to Dorsett they throw to Cosby, and there's nobody even in the picture. And it's touchdown, Cowboy. And the other thing, you like to get someone to pick the guy that has to cover you. Now, he was so wide open, there had to be a pick and ball. Raphael Septien for the extra point with a hold of room holding. Marker. All kind of jumps. Twelve plays, the Cowboys kept it. The drive kept alive when... Green board lined up offside on third and long. Well, you know, we talked about how the Cowboys are relaxed. Longevity and success. That he usually is relaxed. Well, he does the one thing that none of the rest of us could do is he doesn't worry about things he can't control. He really doesn't. Offside. Defense will enforce on the kickoff. Two of those things he has mentioned he doesn't worry about. Are officials and injuries. And you're right, no control. Except the end. And we'll see how he got so wide open. Here's Cosby here. Keener Turner has to cover him here. Now watch the man in motion. He comes here. He's going to pick in here. Cosby then comes free out here. Now watch, watch Cosby. He's a tight end. The motion man goes outside. Now watch as the, the motion man comes inside right there. See right there? He picks him, and that allows Cosby to get wide open. Um, Landry is going to like what he sees, along with his assistant Jim Shopner. will kick off to McLemore and Monroe, and it's going to be Carl Monroe. He took one all the way back against the Redskins. This one to about the 19, a 10-yard return. Last game for veteran 49er receiver Freddie Solomon, number 88. He was introduced last when the offensive unit of San Francisco was introduced before the game. He's had a very distinguished career. You know, 
for so many years, Freddie Solomon has been the big play guy of the 49ers. The guy who's gotten him to two Super Bowls and won two Super Bowls. He is stuck wide to the right, up at the top of your picture. I wouldn't be surprised if they don't go to work to him right here. They go the other way. This is to keep him out of that 4-0 when they get all the extra backs in there. And Montana goes again. Outside the left to play. And to those of you who watched that victory by the pack, welcome to Candlestick Park, where the score is Dallas 7, San Francisco nothing. Russ Francis goes in motion, and Montana's going to put it up again. Over the head of Jerry Wright. Scott Solomon gets the break, gets the rest. Second down, Cowboys expecting the pass. They give it to Craig instead. Roger Craig over the right side for about six, stopped by all Britain. defense now. Blitz. Montana hammered by Jesse Penn. Or most of us. Rice in motion. Montana back to throw. To Russ Francis. That should be enough for a first down. Michael Downs tackled him. The Bay finish the season on a high note 37 17 over Detroit finish their season also at 15 and one and those of you who watched that victory this is Candlestick Park Dallas 7 San Francisco nothing but the 49ers on the move about a foot shy of a first down at the Dallas 36 49ers call this formation little Angus now the regular Angus is playing right guard so Bill Ring is the blocker and the little Angus Craig hammers over the right side for Pat Summerall and John Madden at Candlestick Park in San Francisco where the 49ers need a win to get into the playoffs. Redskins won yesterday at St. Louis and the Giants will be the home team next week. Montana quickly out to Rice. Rice can't shake one tackle. That was by Victor Scott. Let's watch Lockhart and see all the way and see his Montana comes back. Now, usually when he tries to escape, he goes this way. Now, watch what happens here. The, the Cowboys know that. They're going to try and flush him out. Then they're going to try and get containment up the field. But see, Ed Tall jones doesn't get up. Lockhart is still chasing him. He gives him a push at the end. Then Montana came back and gave him his own push. Watch Montana. Hey, a left. Come back with a right. Third and about 12. Pressure's on again, and Montana's hit again. And the flag is down again. Everson Walls came down with the football. Intended for Rice. Montana really took a shot. I think that shot was by Randy White. Randy White is the type of guy that will loosen a few of those teeth for you when he comes flying in there. But that's what the 49ers want to do. They think if they're going to blitz, if they're going to pressure him, then they have to pay for it by handling Jerry Rice first uh, man to man. Well, Everson Walls just did it with the interception. That's Walls' ninth interception of the year. He leads the NFL, trying to become the first player ever to do it three times. Everyone thinks that Everson Walls can't run, but you don't very seldom see anyone get behind him. And if there's ever a battle for the ball, he usually comes down with it. He has great hands. First down, Dallas. The handoff is to Newsom. Straight ahead, and he gets only to second down and seven. Or call it eight. They're at the seven. Hogaboom gives to Dorsett. He gets only a couple more, if that. Carter again, number 95 on the stop. Goes with three wide receivers now as Gordon Banks has come in. And he stood out wide to the left, along with Renfro. Hogaboom in the end zone out of the shotgun. Look out for Fred Dean. He missed. Hogaboom gets the ball to Carl Cole, and they got some breathing room. 
That was a shot. It's back to Newsom, and Newsom is hit right at the line of scrimmage by along with Stover. Cowboys trying to go quickly before the 49ers get settled down. And quickly they go to Carl Poe, who's got some room. He'll have another Fergus Dorsett looking for some room. Not finding much. He lunges for a couple. Todd Schell made the stop. Boom! back to throw with time. Over the head of Cosby. Incomplete. Carlton Williamson broke it up, or was the closest defender. And to just complete the rundown of scores, final there, Kansas City 38, San Diego 34. Green Bay 20, Tampa Bay 17. I know it comes as good news and good music to your ears that Don Coriel will be back next year. I'll tell you, you know, Don Coriel has done a heck of a job down there with that San Diego offense. And whoever he plays, he gives fits to. And I don't know anyone that could do a better job than he does. He just needs a few more players. Third and seven. Hogaboom out of the spread. Here come that 49er blitz. Hogaboom gets away from it again. But he did not get the first down. He got up just to the line of scrimmage, Carlton Williamson. Yeah, the 49ers don't believe that Hogaboom can run. So what you try and do when you have that situation is you try and blitz up the middle. That's what the 49ers are doing. They're coming here and here, but they're going to bring them right up here, right up here. Hogaboom feels it and is able to get out before he gets hit. But this is the way you try and blitz a quarterback that you don't think can run. Right up the middle. Get right in his face. Make him put that ball down. And he wisely put it down. And he wisely got down. Mike Saxon to put it down. Dana McLemore back deep for San Francisco. McLemore at his own 14. Cowboys right in his face. Good coverage by Albritton and Bates. They were the first ones there. Playoff picture, first of all, in the AFC. The wild card game will be the New England Patriots at the New York Jets. And then the divisional playoffs, Cleveland at Miami. And the wild card winner against the Los Angeles Raiders. White Clark split, split wide to the left. Rice wide right, and now he moves in motion. And Montana gives to Derek Harmon. Harmon slips down and is finally knocked down by Michael Downs. Now in the NFC, the situation looks like this. The wild card game will be either the 49ers or Washington, depending upon the result of this one, at the New York Giants. 49ers going with no huddle. The rest of the playoff picture you saw, and we'll get into it later. That's Rice in motion. Montana, chased by White. His intended receiver fell down. It was John Frank who has replaced Russ Francis at tight end. Now, this whole thing that's going on here is interesting, Pat. During the timeout, Ernie Stautner, the defensive coordinator, called the whole defense over to the sideline so the 49ers didn't know who would be in there. Then they used their 4-0 defense. See, here they are on the sideline. See, they don't know. The 49ers don't know who's on defense. That's what they did. Then he put them all in. He put the 4-0 in. Then the 49ers went without a huddle. Cowboys blitzing. Montana gets it out to Rice, and he falls down. No flag. Here's covered by Walls. Rice lost his footing. Now, I think we're seeing the interesting thing here that Bill Walls talked about. He said, if they blitz, we have to be able to get the ball to Jerry Rice. Now, they've been blitzing. They haven't been able to get the ball to Jerry Rice. One thing, they get good pressure on Montana, but two, good coverage by Everson Walls. Runniger back to punt. Gordon Banks back for the Cowboys. Not one of his better efforts. Tell you, he looked like he got that rush there by Fowler. Yeah. He just shanked that thing off to his right. That looks like some of my golf shots. Get up there and you think you, you know you're really gonna hit it. You're gonna swing. Give it everything you got. Boom! Boom! Shank! came close. The punt traveled only 30 yards. I think he saw Fowler coming. You know, he's a right-footed kicker right. stepping that way, and Fowler was coming into his face. That peripheral vision will cause a shank. Fowler in 
in the backfield with Dorsett. And they give to Fowler. Fowler goes straight ahead. From the time they become a Washington Redskin, they have to learn to hate Cowboys. <laughs> right. On second down. Fowler stays in the block. Holderboom gets it outside to Dorsett. Tony gets that knocked out of bounds at about the 43-yard line of San Francisco by the young guy. The young guy who's always been there. Yeah. Here's Hogaboom. Gets it down to Renfro. Renfro, who was hammered by Keaton. Milton McCall has replaced Keena Turner after that last collision with Renfro as we caught the pass for the Dallas first down. Here's Dorsett. Inside the 49er 30. There's Keena Turner, who was punished after he made the tackle on Renfro. Interesting, we were talking to Tom Landry last night, and I asked him why he continued to coach and be so successful as long as he has, and he said, I like to see people be as good as they can be. And he cited Mike Renfro, saying he has gotten 120% out of his ability. That's his biggest thing in coaching, is seeing that. Here's Hogaboom. A lot of coaching over there. Eight out of 11 for Hogaboom. One touchdown to Cosby. Newsom is moving. 49ers on a blitz again, and Hogaboom fires outside. Complete to Timmy Newsom. Tony Rock really upset. Timmy Newsom. See, we can see if he has control here. Looks like as he goes down, the ball comes out. The officials there are saying that he had it. I don't know if he sees it. Hicks had it. Now he's waving. No, he's waving incomplete. And then, so he says that the pass was an incomplete pass. Then Ronnie Lott pushed him. It's second down. Set and he's around the corner almost. But Ronnie Lott comes up quickly with a, an assist from Ricky Ellison. What looked like it was going to turn into a split to the left. Pole is off to the right. Here come the 49ers on that blitz. Oh, the boom lost it in the direction of Renfro. Septian is good, and it's 10-0 Dallas, and the Redskins love it. If Dallas can win, the Redskins will go to Giants Stadium next week to play the Giants. It's 10-0. Septian set to kick it off to McLemore and Monroe. About the 31 before he stopped by Steve Diossi. 24-yard return. One week from today. It begins at 
12.30 Eastern Time with the NFL Today. And then John Madden and I will have the pleasure of calling that game, either the 49ers or the Redskins against the Giants. And it's a long train ride back, isn't it? <laughs> Starting Tuesday to get back there for next weekend. Montana. Cowboy Blitz is a flag down. Solomon was open. Two flags down. And a 49er down. And a shift by the Cowboy defense. A lot of things going on. I'll tell you, that would hurt. Now, the that's the center, Fred Quillen. Now, what happened is the 49ers lost their starting right guard, Randy Cross, or all-pro right guard, who was also their backup center. Guy McIntyre is playing guard in Cross's place. They do have Fred Hill, who they just signed. John Hill, I'm sorry. Offside. Defense. Illegal use of the hands. Defense. John Hill, a veteran of 14 years in the NFL. The illegal use of the hands is right up there on Victor Scott on Freddie Solomon. Now, it was in the five-yard zone. It was okay. It was a legal area to hit. The only thing they had to call out on was that he hit him in the face. Fred Quillen coming out. Montana had a chance to come over and converse with Bill Wall. Montana back to throw, has some protection, takes it out to Dwight Clark. Three, Craig. Quillen is back in the offensive line, by the way. That was Solomon motion, and there's Craig. And a first down and a flag. Randy White made the stop. That's in the area of offensive holding. about it second down 12 at the 34 home set back is Craig and they get the Craig on the draw play and he has no place to go Dexter Clinkscale and Bill Bates and Don Smurick read it well down and 10 Montana flushed out of the pocket by Jeff Coat Coat with his favorite move. One thing that Jeff Coat said last night, he said, if I get in there and I get a, a, a sack, do me a favor and give me a chalkboard. Here's Jeff Coat go right here, coming in there and putting the pressure. Boom, 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 boom. So I give him some good boom, some good pressure. See, he starts there. Now he starts to the inside. He just took a stunt. Now the reason he got in there is that no one blocked him. That does help. Thanks. Juggles a minute, is out to the 40, going back the other way, is out to nowhere. He lost or set in the backfield for Dallas. Ogerboom faced by Dean, but Poe is wide open. Right at midfield, he caught it and covered up, a gain of 16. You know, last night all the players were saying, hey, Tony Hill's not playing, but don't think that that doesn't mean that we can't throw the ball because this guy, Poe, is really something. And Carl Poe, you know, and it, it, it was going to someday, they feel, be a star in this league. They say he just keeps getting better every day. 6-2 and 175. He is split wide to the left, right down at the bottom of your picture this time. And Renfro is up at the top. Boom to Renfro. He caught the ball. I can't believe he made that catch. Dwight Hicks was right with him. He was falling down, looking into the sunshine. Everything possibly could have gone wrong. Say, when things are going your way, they're going your way. When you, you can catch them like this, you make a move. Candlestick Park is always slippery. You start to slip, you fall down, you come back, and you catch the ball. And then someone's going to say he had good concentration. Yeah. That's a heck of a lot more than good concentration. If he didn't fall down, I don't think he would have caught it. No, a lot of guys can concentrate, but they <laughs> can't catch it like that while they're concentrating. Ogaboom gives to Tony Dorsett. He spins in the middle and got maybe two. Ricky Ellison on the stop. Jerry Rice, who Bill Walsh felt was such, such a key to this game, Got something wrong with his foot. Well, what they're doing, I think they're changing cleats here. Usually, 
the heavier the field, the longer cleats you want. Now, a player will usually start with medium or short cleats. Then if he has trouble slipping, what he does, instead of keep slipping, he just puts on longer cleats. What did Dorsett say last night? He's going to start with long cleats. Long, long as, as they get. got. Here the 49ers come after Holgerbone. He just throws it up, and it's caught by Cole. Carl Cole. A Dallas first down. Eric Wright, the defender. Holgerbone again was hit this time by Stover. A gain of 15. Gary Hogaboom is doing his part today. I mean, Jeff Stover was hanging on him. How he was able to get the ball with that much velocity out there. Watch, he's running to his right. Now he has to start going backwards. He can't step forward. There's 72. Jeff Stover in him. And he still gets the ball out here and leads his receiver, Carl Poe. And Stover wound up with a bad shoulder and had to come out of the game. Hardy has taken his place. Ogaboom to work again and going for Renfro. And he had it and lost it. That was almost a touchdown Cowboys. McLemore. Watch this move coming up. Well, it's a post corner. Watch Renfro. He's down here at the bottom of the screen. He's going to start up. Then he'll start in to his right to the post. See, he goes there. See there? Now that gets the defender going in, McLemore. Then he turns back out. Then he flattens out. He's done it all so far. He's done all the move things. Perfect pass right in his hands, and he drops it. Maybe had he fallen down, he would <laughs> yeah. have caught it. Something else could have gone wrong. Yeah. That was some move, though. The old post really? corner. Sell him on the post and run to the corner. There at the 49er 23. Hold the boom back, and here they come again, chasing Gary. Down he goes at the 30 in the hands of Tina Turner. They just didn't get him blocked. A loss of eight. Hogaboom back in the spread. And here they come after him again. Dorsett is open. Hard attempt. That's a pretty impressive statistic. 22 straight on grass. Could be 23. Just got over the crossbar. It's good. And the Redskins are loving it back in Virginia. They do very few things straight. Or normal. <laughs> Step the in. It will be Carl Monroe at the 10. Monroe hit down at about the 25. And the Cowboys are saying they came up with a football. Let's see. 49er offensive unit, meantime, is coming on the field. 16-yard return. 49ers maintain possession. Bill Walsh. Not too happy about this year or today, I'm certain. You know, he's looking at that script. You know, he always scripts the first 25 plays of the game. And last year, it worked so well for him. He said this year they just keep giving them different defenses and it hasn't worked. Here's Roger Craig. He breaks the tackle and gets the 49er first down. Mike Hegman finally stopped him. You know, the Cowboys are doing something we haven't seen in shifting their offensive tackles. Well, they've been doing that uh, uh, in the first half here. They take John Dutton and they switch him from the left tackle over the left guard and then they take Randy White and put him at the nose over the center. Never seen him do that before. Roger Craig has gone over the 1,000-yard mark in rushing. He has 1,006 now after that run. Now to get it done receiving. Craig fumbles. The ball's up in the air. Dallas ball. How about a split wide as a flanker? Picks it back to Fowler. Fowler hammers inside the 35, and... Here comes a penalty marker. Ronnie Lott made the stop. Phil Posderick, number 75, was just pounding his fist into his hand. And that would mean to me that the penalty would be against him. Oh! Dinosaur is fighting. Ogaboom gets rid of it in time to Dorset. He was looking right into the eyes of Ricky Ellison. Hey, he really is 
paying for it today. Gary Hogaboom is having a good day and leading these Cowboys, but he's going to have a sore day tomorrow if they keep going like this and keep letting one of those linebackers get free all the time. Wow, yeah. Todd Shell was the free linebacker that time. You know, I never believed in that. They call that the hot receiver. You let a linebacker go, and the quarterback has to get rid of it before he gets there. Yeah. That's easy to draw up and hard to do if you're the quarterback. You better carry five quarterbacks if you think that philosophy is good. Here's Dorsett. Right the ball is away. And still away. And the 49ers have to come up with that. And Hogaboom is up in a fracas with Tui Asasopo. He'll lose that one. That's a mismatch. Finally got him off the field. He's probably as fired up about this game as anyone. Michael Carter, he's from Dallas. He was a Cowboy fan. He's the guy they want to run at and come off of him. Fred Dean was the guy who made the tackle. You see him? He made the tackle and got his hand in there and pulled the ball out on Dorsett. Tina Turner comes up with the fumble recovery. So it's first down San Francisco. Inside their 20, about the 17 to throw and fire complete the Clark. The reduction, the roster reduction from 49 to 45 probably had a bigger effect on the 49ers than any other team. I would think so because they use more players than any other team, both on offense and defense. It really hurt them on special teams as well. Montana, 7 out of 13. Here's Craig. He only got a yard. Eugene Lockhart. The one thing that they do so well and have over the years since they've had Roger Craig is hit him on those short possession underneath passes. And I'm surprised so far that they really haven't gone to that. The Cowboy defense, when they're in their flex, is darn near impossible to run against. But it's always easier to throw some on first down. That's the book on Craig. That's Russ Francis on the move. Craig, and that's the play you wanted. Jesse Penn gets him out of bounds. That'll bring up a third. That's an interesting thing that that play that they did is they were trying to run a real pick. They were trying to interesting. I don't know if it's legal or not. It's interesting. Montana gets it to Rice. Covered by Walls, but it's across midfield. A gain of 14. Walls tried to get him, get that right hand. Rice wide to the left this time. Montana back to throw with time. He's got a man wide open. That's right there. That's no contact.
outside the 20, hit hard by Ron Ferrari. A return of 17. Let's look at the touchdown pass again. Anytime you get to the post, you have to get rid of the free safety. Now, because they blitz, he's man to man here, so he steps up. Here's Clark. He starts up, he comes post, then he goes corner. Scott goes to the corner, then he comes back post. Post, corner, post, safety is up. Watch Clark outside, Victor Scott, he really gets some turn. Here he goes about, now he gets some turn there when he gives him the second corner. Wide open, Michael Downs up because of the blitz. Cowboys have the ball at their own 22, first and 10. That's Fowler behind Hogeboom. And behind Schultz. This is Dorsett, beg your pardon. Ricky Ellison on the stop. Okay, they're starting to block now on Michael Carter in a different way. That time they influenced him. They brought Rafferty the center down. Then they brought the right guard, Kurt Peterson, came down and blocked him. He is big, strong, and just as important, very quick. He looks like a sumo wrestler. To Cosby. He had it, looked up the field, and lost it. Ronnie Lott hit Cosby. And Carlton Williamson did too. I bet Ronnie Lott had something to say to Cosby after he hit him. Usually those safeties say, hey, don't come in the middle anymore because I'm waiting right here for you. Watch him. See, he hits him, and now he's going to say something to him. Says, I'm like, don't come in here anymore. See? The offense doesn't pay any attention to him, but they still do it. You know, it's good talk. If he doesn't come in the middle, where else is he going to go? I mean, he's a tight end. That's his area. Right. Hogaboom. To Poe. And he's got it. Carl Poe is just barely caught from behind by Dan. He did today. Big to Dorsett. Hogaboom for one time with time for Winfro. And he's got it inside the 10. Again, it's Matt Lamore, the victim. 20. Poe is out on Nixon. And that's Cosby in motion and Hogaboom back to throw. Hoping for time. Look out. Jeff Stover tripped him up from behind. They were looking in the direction of Tory Nixon. There's Mike Renfro there. He's against Dwight Hicks. See, he starts in on that post corner move. I think Hogaboom wanted to hit him early. Then he came back and he was looking to this side, but Jeff Stover caught him from behind. Renfro goes out wide to the right, and Poe comes wide left again. Dorset. Now Hogaboom moves Fowler to the other side. They just barely got the play off. Hogaboom doesn't get anything off. Ricky Ellison. There's a fired up linebacker, Ricky Ellison. He loves it when you're going to run. Here he is here. He gets in here unblocked and he gets Hogaboom before he has a chance to even start back. Watch him, he times it good. He times it well, he goes right over Dorsett. Hogaboom tried to throw it quickly, couldn't, had to bring it down, and Ricky Ellison says, I got me one. Clock running less than a minute now in the first half. Both teams have all three timeouts remaining. Hogaboom out of the shotgun. Tried to draw play to Dorsett. Jeff Stover and a lot of people were right there. And set the end will come on. Great snapper. 41. That's the distance. Septian is good again. <laughs> Septian bounces it to John Frank. He juggles it and bounces up. And very intelligently, he gets out of bounds. Second. Here, make you think you're coming here, and then get your one-on-one -on -one and work it back to this side. That's what the 49ers did on that play. They had the three over there. Jerry Rice back here, Singleton. You see, they got him single. Oh, they should have kept him going straight up. Now they have the three wideouts lined up, one behind the other. 
Hunter. That's two that same formation yep. again. I bet they go to the left side this time, though. Montana goes quickly in that direction and got Rice quickly. Inside the 40 to about the 38. They have one more timeout left. A gain of 14. And they took it. Or since their last timeout, they had the three wide receivers on this side. Rice over here, this time again against Victor Scott. Now instead of going deep, he goes up and then boom, comes in on the slam. Gets the ball to about the 35, 34. Now right there, that'd be a 51-yard field goal. This is what the other side looked like. One, two, three. Lined up, the Cowboys are lining up on there. Now what they do is they're going to bump the first two. That's a smart thing. Like if you're, you know, hunting for gophers or playing golf, it's good. Quick pass outside to Francis. Francis got him in range. Now watch Ward Wershing when he comes onto the field, if we can. He never looks up. What he does, though, is he looks at those hash marks. Because if you go straight down the hash marks, the hash marks are the same width as the goalpost. But the goalposts are a lot farther away, and they look a lot more narrow. He won't look up at him. This is going to be from uh, just inside the 30, so make it 39 yards for Worshing. He says to his holder when he first comes, the Cowboys 16, the 49ers 10. Here's Septian with McLemore and Monroe back deep. The bounce goes past both of them. Monroe chases it into the end zone and downs it there and the 49ers will start from their own 20. Perfect day. Boy, weather-wise, you couldn't ask for better. And look at this. In 1985, the 49ers have had nine halftime leads. Last year, when they went 15-1 and 1, and 19-1, and 1, ultimately, they had to leave 17-18-1, and 1, sorry. Well, that's when they had that script. You know, Bill Wall said that it was working so well. It's not working as well this year. He said they're doing better in the second half, though. Montana quickly to Rice. Good Wall trying to cover. He stepped out of bounds. And they mark it up at the 44-yard line for a pickup of 24. It was some tightrope back there. Watch you. He's going to run it out. Then he'll make Walls miss here, 24. Then he makes Clint Scale miss right here, 47. And then he finally gets the third guy, Gene Lockhart, finally gets him. That was two misses and a get, but he got about five extra yards on those misses. 24 total, first down 49ers at their own 44. And the give is to Eric Harmon. And the flag comes down out of the middle of the pack. Jesse Penn stopped him. But it's, again, in that area where it is most likely offensive holding. It is that umpire. He sits right there behind those defensive tackles, and he's watching the center and the guard. And usually when it comes from there, it's going to be against the center or one of the guards. Holding, number 68, offense, still first down. Here's... Dutton. Yeah, that's the, the left guard. Usually they watch that scene. Now that's one of the shifts. She, Dutton shifted over to that side. You see Ayers blocking him right there in the right of the screen. Now right there, you see the arm got behind him and he hooked that elbow. Montana retreats on first down and goes quickly to Rice and has it. Rice gets back just about the 10 they lost. Down on the arms of Victor Scott. the 49ers do is they still complete the ball they still do things in spurts they still get the big thing but the thing that's haunted them all year is they're not doing it consistently you know, I mean Montana hits skip you know gets the ball there they get a run then something happens like the penalty a little turnover they just haven't been able to put it together it's second and ten Harmon comes in motion Montana quickly out to Harmon maybe a yard Maybe not. Maybe not that much. Everson Walls. 
stopped him. Randy White put the pressure on Montana. The amazing thing was not that the ball was completed for only a yard or two, but the fact that he even got that ball away. It looked like it came out from the side. It looked like he threw crooked. Watch Randy White. He's taking a stunt, a looping move. Now, how Montana got that ball, he was ducking. He was bailing out on that one. You know, it dropped about three yards. Now he goes back seven, and he's chased again out of the pocket. Montana does it well on the run, and he finally just throws it away. In the direction of Rice, but Montana was chased by Smerick. Well, see, and that's the, you know, the typical thing. They complete a couple passes to Rice. They get a penalty. They get a sack. They flush him out of the pocket. They just can't do it. Boom, 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 right down the field the way they did last year. And last year, in that great year, that was one of their trademarks. They were solid every week. Runniger's kick is a good one this time. Gordon Banks will handle it. Gets away from one man, but the 49ers are there. A horde of red jerseys. Jeff Fuller led the pack. Next weekend, the NFL playoffs began with the NFL wild card game. Either these 49ers or the Redskins at Giants Stadium against the Giants. 12.30 Eastern time, the NFL today begins. And then John Madden and I will be at the game. Hey, the Giants sure looked good yesterday, didn't they? Hey. Joe Morris, wow. Well, that's the type of thing you need going into the playoffs. That's, that's why I believe it's important for the Cowboys. You don't want to play poorly at the end of the season and limp in there. Well, you want to go in peaking. They certainly haven't played poorly up until now. Oh, the boom going right to work. To Carl Poe. Outside the 30, the 32. Torrey Nixon now. And the 49ers secondary. They got him from the Redskins. Well, you know that that has to be their game plan. Eric Wright was in there early, got injured. He had a hip flexor. Then they put Dana McLemore in, and they just threw wherever McLemore went. Now they took McLemore out, replaced him at the end of the half with number 20, Torrey Nixon, and that's the guy they're working on. Todd Fowler is the back with Dorsett. 49ers blitz. They call it. Screen pass to Dorsett, and Dorsett gets another first down for the Cowboys out to the 45. Ronnie Lott, Todd Schill tripped him up. Well, you know, they're still working that side. They, they hit the pass out there. Now they throw the screen pass out to that same side, to the side that Torrey Nixon's on. He was in a zone coverage. He has to come up. You see 20 coming up to the outside. Then they cut back inside him. They're still working that side. You find a little weakness, and you keep going at it until they stop you. Rafferty got out there in front of that screen, and he blocked Torrey Nixon. Hogaboom, the quarterback. White is not dressed if he joined us late. Hogaboom rolls right. Got good protection. Pass is picked off by Dwight Hicks. Hicks by Fowler. But the 49ers have it in Dallas territory. Big play for the 49er defense. I'm sure those Redskins guys are thinking, why, when you're having so much success working on the other side, why work against the veteran? Why go to the right side? White Hicks is just sitting there waiting for that one. We we'll see the motion. We we'll see his own defense. See Hicks, the outside guy, just backs up, backs up, reads the quarterback. I don't think Hogaboom read that as his own defense. He was trying to go to Cosby. Montana has him at the Dallas 44. And he doesn't go right to work to Craig, and he does. And Craig hammers for about nine. Inside the 35, stopped by Dennis Thurman. counter tray on that play and we'll see it here you know where they do this they pull the offside like this Oop, it was like this excuse me I had the wrong side and then he goes that way well, that's the play that the Redskins use so well that everyone's running now the back takes a counter step the off guard and tackle pull that was the 49er version of counter tray that's good for nine second and one is to the Dallas 30 before Jesse Penn gets him down with an assist from Eugene Lockhart. Craig already over 1,000.
in rushing. This has been a big week for Roger Craig. He won the Len Eshman Award. That's the, the players, you know, picking the, the, the best player and the most inspirational player. He won that this week. He won the starter in the Pro Bowl this week. And his wife is having a baby this week any day. What an enthusiastic individual he is. He enjoys playing this game. Montana has some time. And he has Francis, who juggled it but held on at the Dallas 20. Walls and Scott, a gain of eight. You know, it's funny how you go to training camp and you go through the four preseason, 16 regular season, and for these 49ers, it all boils down to one more half of play. Either they get it in this half and they go on, or they don't and the season's over. This, indeed, is the playoffs for them. 9.45 left third quarter. Craig, the lone setback. but maybe enough for the first down. It's going to be close. Randy White made the tackle. I think that's one of the things Bill Walsh decided at halftime. We have to get the ball more to Roger Craig. In the first half, he only carried it six times and caught two passes. He only had his hands on the ball eight times. I think when you look at that at halftime, you look at those stats, you say, he's the hottest player we have. We have to get him the ball certainly been doing it in this drive. First down, 49ers. Bill Walsh in backup quarterback. Matt Cavanaugh. He just put John Frank in the game. Fonhorst having some work done on his hand. 49er trainer hustled out there while they were measuring and now hustles off. Veteran Keith Fonhorst playing with that mask on. Got a finger in the eye. Seeing more and more of that. Pitch out to Craig. He got three yards on desire. Dutton and Hegman out there to make the stop. I think the Cowboy defense, when they're in their regular defense or flex, probably plays that type of thing. You know, that uh, toss or, or, or sweep as well as anyone. And there's the guy that coaches them, Ernie Stotner. He's calling in the signals there, telling them what to do. Sending in four guys, taking out four guys. It's like mass confusion. They're back in the 4-0 now with the, all the defensive backs. Montana gets it down to Francis inside the 10, inside the 5 he is. Dexter Clinchgale got him down. A gain of 13 to the tight end, Russ Francis. That's the thing you do with your tight end. It's a crossing battle. We'll see a play pass. Here comes Francis across. Clean scale was on him, man to man. Francis just beat him by a couple steps. But the play pass holds him, holds the linebackers. Then you can sneak your tight end in there behind him. Plus, Francis runs that pattern as close as he can to that umpire. He uses the umpire as a shield on that play. First and goal at the four. Bill Ring is in the game. James 
Jones of Dallas. Flag is down on the near side of the field. Far away, away from where Jones went down in the arms of Dana McLemore. It looks like it's going to be against the Cowboys, Bill Brace. They'll take the Cowboys back inside the 10-yard line. It was funny, Bates and uh, uh, Vince Albritton had John Frank down there. They were two-timing him, and that's where the flag was, away from the return. L.A. go use the hands to push to the back on the return, number 40. A push in the back by Bates. Four-yard run doesn't sound like much, but this one is, this touchdown. I tell you, you know, usually the middle linebacker is man-to-man -man on the fullback. And it's usually me against you. You know, fullback against that. At the end of that play, they kept going after it. Ogaboom hands to Dorsett, and Dorsett gets nothing. Ricky Ellison again. One of the leaders on this 49er team. And he is fired up. I tell you, that's what a middle linebacker is supposed to look like. You talk about ice, you talk about determination, you talk about going to go out and get a runner. That's Ricky Ellison in his half. What do you want? Come on, get him in here. Bill Walsh said to us yesterday, he was afraid that Roger Craig was worn down a little bit because of all the activity. But he sure doesn't look like it, does he? Never takes the day off. Hogaboom back to throw. A lot of time. Renfro somehow wide open again. Renfro out of bounds over in front of the Cowboy bench by Hicks and Lott. But they're all the way up to the 45-yard line. Hey, that had to be a zone defense where Hicks was going to take the short and Lott was going to get the deep. Which they, they get the play fake. Now Hogaboom starts to run out to his right and, looks what he and look what he finds wide open. No short guy, no deep guy, nothing. Finally, Dwight hits, Hicks gets over and misses, and Ronnie Lott rides him out of bounds. Well, that's a good illustration of what you can accomplish if the passer has time. First down at the 46. Ogaboom screen pass out to Fowler. Fowler, nothing doing. Again, it's Ricky Ellison. that a lot of people thought would never play football again with all the knee operations he's had. Well, he had those bad knees, and he played at USC, and, and, and they thought when he came out that he would never be able to play professional football or any kind of football. The 49ers gave him a shot. Jack Reynolds took him under his wing. The knees have, have held up, and Ricky Ellison is a heck of a middle linebacker, inside linebacker in the 3 4. And the leader, really. He's taking Reynolds' place. Here comes the blitz. Hogaboom gets outside of it. Finally gets it away and throws it away. Carl Cole is in the area. Okay, you have to give Tony Dorsett an A for effort. You know, he always runs the ball, and you always think of him as a runner. That time, he had a block. And watch the result of that. I'll tell you, that was some collision. Watch Ricky Ellison come here. He's going to come and have a collision right here with Dorsett and just run right over. Watch Dorsett in the fake. Now watch him hit here. He goes, whoa, he goes right on his back. Ellison keeps coming. Dorsett said, I was supposed to play fake. No one said anything about blocking. Out of a spread formation. Cowboys going now with their three wide receivers. 49ers. Pass is picked off by Ronnie Lott. Over the head of Cole and Lott still on his feet. Back at just about the same spot the last drive started. Overthrown. Ronnie Lott with the interception gives the 49ers the ball at the Dallas 45. He just overthrows this one. Gary Holcomb trying to hit his outside receiver, Carl Paul. situation. Dallas has three. San Francisco has two. 49ers had the lead by one point. And the ball 
First down at the Dallas 45. Montana under Mike Heckman sacked for the third time. That is a significant uh, statistic and tells as good a story as any that's kept in football. In the 10 games they won, they were plus 24 in the turnover department. In the five losses, they turned it over 14 times. They'll eat you up. Here they go with the stack deck on the right side. Three receivers lined up behind each other. Montana has it picked off almost by Michael Down. A collision with Mike Wilson is the only thing that saved an interception. Hey, the Cowboys look like they're ready for that formation because every time the 49ers have done it, the Cowboys have been in good position. Look, they have the three guys. The Cowboys have their three guys. They let one go, bump one, run from inside out with the other one, and two of them arrive at the same time of the ball. That's good coverage. Good defense by the Cowboys. That'll bring up a third and 17. The 49ers are at their own 38. Rice is split wide to the left. Montana felt the pressure applied by two tall Jones and Jeff Coat and Randy White and had to unload. Gordon Banks comes in and goes deep. John Hardy headed for the locker room. Health-wise, he looks okay. It must be for some sort of an equipment change. Max Runniger back to bunt. Ah, good kick. in this half started from their own 14 ran three plays and had an interception by Dwight Hicks they started at their own eight ran five plays and Ronnie Lott picked one off now this time they start from their own four 457 left to play in the third quarter nothing maybe a yard or two for Dorsett Michael Carter, the nose tackle, really got penetration on that play. Now the Cowboys are running at him, and then Dorsett is just going to go away from him. Watch him as he penetrates. Watch him. He takes the right side. He comes flying in that backfield. Dorsett takes a step at him, and then boom, right around him to the outside. So stay away from 95. Dorsett still has that amazing quickness. Not many people can do that and make that adjustment that quickly. That's Renfro in motion. And it's Dorsett on the Dallas version of counter trade. Wayne Board was the first man there, number 76. The word on John Hardy, whom we saw headed for the locker room a minute ago, is that he has a problem with his elbow, but he should return. Dorsett 70 carries 45 yards. This 49er defense is sure a tough one to run against. When you get all running starts with a nose tackle. When you get a nose tackle like Carter in there, Dorsett's not going to get those 100 yards. Third and five. To Renfro on McLemore. I'll tell you one thing, the Cowboys found McLemore again. That is the, is the 49er defense. That's why McLemore is in there. They just look for him. They've beaten him short. They've beaten him deep. They've beaten him on the right side and the left side. I'm sure they're just trying to find him, get a match up there. Hogaboom's looking for it, and then go into that guy. Five catches, 99 yards now for Mike Renfro. That one was for 13. More importantly, it was for a Dallas first down. Hogaboom gives him a drop play to Dorsett, who gets outside the 25. Michael Carter on the stop. 
Dorsett was saying last night that they're probably going to run a lot of draws, and again, because the 49ers penetrate, and they want to let them penetrate, find out where they're penetrating to, then run away from it. We were talking to uh, Gary Hogaboom last night and saying, asking how much this game meant to him. And to him, it means a lot. But sure, I think it means a lot what he's going to be doing next year. Second and six. Blitz by the 49ers. Todd Shell. And down goes Hogaboom. You know, Dwight Hicks was coming from the left side. He didn't get there. Todd Shell got there. But I think, I think it's right here. I think Hicks starts here all the way. Hogaboom sees him when he's back here, looks at him, holds up, and then he gets caught from the back side. So watch how they start the blitz. Hicks is all the way. See him sneak, 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 sneak. Now he comes in there. Now right here, you see Hogaboom sees that, turns the other way, and there's Todd Shell. That's a long way to come, the blitz. <laughs> That's your disguise of it. Renfro and Newsom this time wide right, poles to the left. They're faking blitz again. This time they back out. Hogaboom with a lot of time. Buying some more time. And now Fred Dean finally gets him down. And the Cowboys will have to punt it. Five sacks by the 49ers. Well, I think we have to give Dana Macklemore credit on that one, Pat. They were trying to go to him again, but he had Mike Renfro covered on that one. So Hogaboom couldn't throw it when he wanted to. Had to hold it, and the rush finally caught up with him. Saxon back to punt. And Dana McLemore standing for the 49ers back at his own 45. Saxon about two steps into the end zone. All out. He gets rid of it. Not a good kick. McLemore is hit just as soon as he catches the ball by Kenny Duckett. And it's a miracle that he was able to hold on. Came flying down there, ran into Macklemore, jumped up, and he got a little wobbly. Watch it, Macklemore's watching it. Here comes Duckett right in the chin. He hit him. Whew. Don't tell me they don't care who wins. A minute 59 left to play in the third quarter at Candlestick with the 49ers in a must win situation, leading by one point. 17 16, and it has not in any way been easy. Montana and the 49ers have the ball at the Cowboys 46. First down. He gets it out quickly to Craig. Faced by Downs and finally shoved out of bounds by Downs. Yeah, we were talking about Roger Craig and and how he works. He never takes a day off. On their day off, he comes in and he works out. He's there every day, and then, even during practice, when he runs a play, he runs it 50 yards. I mean, he runs every play 50 yards. No huddle. 49ers go quickly. Montana goes back quickly. Gets it out to Craig. Chased by Lockhart. And now he is... Roger Craig has done something that no one else has ever done in the history of the NFL. He's gotten over a thousand yards rushing and over a thousand yards receiving. The first player in the history of this game to do it. 1,023 running, 1,012 receiving. of these 49 fans. Francis in motion. Derek Harmon straight ahead for a couple. Stopped by Lockhart. That truly is a remarkable, remarkable feat. And that is not all that Roger Craig can do. Well, you know, he catches the passes, he runs. That's how he blocks on this play. 33, he's the fullback. It's going to be a crossing action. Watch, he's going to come in there on Jim Jeffcoat. Boom, he just cuts 
Jeff go down, and then Harmon runs to the inside. Good players do it all. There's no great one-dimensional player. Second and six. Outside it is to Craig, faced by Lockhart. He slipped down at the 15. Gain of four. It'll bring up a third down situation. Yes. He's a guy that sort of lights up the place. Well, he does. You know, I mean, he lights up the place when he's sitting around in a meeting room. And, you know, in practice, I couldn't believe it, but just on a Friday practice, he'll take the ball and they run a dummy scrimmage and he runs at 50 yards. He runs as far as he can go. And then he runs back and does it again. He only knows one way to go. It's a good thing they got a fence around the field. A reverse coming to Rice. Rice is faced by Jeff Cook, and that's a mismatch. Rice inside the 15.
operating from their own 42. And the 49ers leading by eight points. Went for a wide left. Cole, right, white. Here comes the blitz. Outside to Newsom. Kemi Newsom lunges for about five. Michael Walter brought him down. They give him six. You know, Michael Walter, of course, was the famous guy that the Cowboys drafted. And Gil Brandt said, I'll guarantee you he'll be a starter by the end of training camp. Of course, he wasn't a, a starter. He was waived the next year, and now he's starting for the 49ers as an inside linebacker. There's Todd Shell that was shaken up a little bit. Walter, the sort of big mitt he's got on his hand, he's got a broken thumb. But he had two screws put in his thumb. And then it got infected, and they had to take him out. Hogaboom, outside pole. That's complete. As Corey Nixon was on the coverage, and Cole was down on the sideline, holding his left calf. That looks in the area of a cramp. I'm sure the way they're rubbing it, that's what it is mm -hmm. there. You know, sometimes you... You get the thing and you get, you know, you're sweating, you're playing all day, and, and you just make a, a move like that and you clamp up. And that's what happened uh -huh. to Bo on that time. You know how you are when, you're, when you've been going all day and then you just stop and you tense something, it just stays in that tense position. Carl Poe, he's had a great day. Coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Light Beer from Miller. Everything you've always wanted in a beer and less. And by Radio Shack, your Christmas electronics store. Set, who was hit by Tory Nixon. While we wait for Tony to get back to the huddle, let's run down the list of scores around the league today. Indianapolis beat Houston 27 to 9. Well, that's in the fourth quarter. I beg your pardon. The Jets did beat Cleveland 37 10. They'll host the wild card game. New England will be the guests 34 23 over Cincinnati. Miami 28 0 over Buffalo. They win the AFC East. Chicago finishes 15 and 1. Philadelphia beat Minnesota. Atlanta over New Orleans. Kansas City over San Diego. Green Bay beat Tampa Bay. 49ers chase Hogaboom. He just lofts it out in the direction of Tony Dorsett. Gina Turner was pursuing Gary Hogaboom. Here's where he got the pressure from. He's trying to throw a screen out here. Turner gets the pressure on him, and he ends up, he just has to throw it away. You see, he gets Turner coming from one side, Fuller from the other. Turner's free. You see, now, now he pulls it down. Now he just has to throw it, whether Dorsett's ready or not. That was a smart play, just getting rid of that one. And, and avoid the loss. Third down, yeah. Third and 10. Now he operates, Hogaboom does, out of the spread. 49ers do not blitz. Hogaboom has some time. He's chased by Carter, and Carter has him. Michael Carter on Hogaboom for a loss of six. You know, one thing that the guy does, you know, you take the nose tackle, you let the ends rush up the field, and you give the nose tackle, he just handles that line of scrimmage, and he's ready for any quarterback scramble. That's exactly what Carter did that time. On the line, saw the scramble, boom, right down the line. Saxon back to punt. McLemore back at the 11. Now lets it bounce. And it bounces and rolls dead at the 15-yard line. Front of 36 yards. 13-16 left to play. 49ers are hit by eight. Tonight on CBS, 60 minutes, of course. And then a special presentation starring George C. Scott, a Christmas carol. And then crazy like 
or Fox. <laughs> now, these fans are crazy about their 49ers. 13-16 left to play. And they give it to Craig. Roger Craig around the corner. Finally taken down by Downs. With a 49ers first down and a gain of 19 by Roger Craig. Well, I think right now the 49ers are serious about their running. What they did is they put Bill Ring in. He's number 30. He's the lead blocker for Roger Craig. They lead with Ring. Craig comes up, steps up, hold, brings the defense in, and then boom, he pops it out to the outside. But when Bill Ring comes in as a halfback, he was on that play, you can darn near be guaranteed it's a running play. Ring is out, Harmon is in. Craig is in motion. Montana gives on the draw play to Harmon. He got a yard. We were talking to Craig yesterday about Cowboys are saying they got the ball. I don't think the officials agree. Well, they got to find out what's down there in the bottom of that pile. Craig. It's interesting talking to him yesterday about the backfield that he was in in college at Nebraska. Mike Rozier. Well, first, here's the fumble. Turner Gill, the quarterback. Here's Harmon's fumble. Yeah, you see, he just runs right in there to the line. It didn't do anything to the Cowboy line. Watch the ball is right down there. Randy, Randy White's left foot bouncing back up. Cowboy White Arm gets in there and gets it. Dorsett goes out wide to the left. Pitch out is to Newsom. There's some room there. Newsom is out of bounds at about the 49 or 30. You know, Pat, now with a score 24 to 16, the Cowboys have to think in terms of two scores. They need a touchdown and a field goal. So even, you know, they're in field goal position now, so they don't have to think in going for it on a fourth down. And three. 12.55 left to play down. And off Dorsett. About a yard shy of a first down. Jeff Stover on the bottom of the pile just to complete that Nebraska backfield. The other member was Irving Fryer. And like you said yesterday, no wonder they're always up in the top five or six. The other thing is Roger Craig is setting records for pass receiving. At Nebraska, he only caught 16 passes his whole career there for his senior year. That's amazing. Bill Walsh said when we brought him to minicamp, there goes Tony Dorsett limping off, we knew we had something special. James Jones with Newsom in the backfield. It's Newsom. I don't know if he got it or not. Ricky Allison. This is the situation here now, Pat. If they're short, I think they have to kick the field goal. If they only needed one touchdown, now I'm not sure what these guys think, but they probably think that they ought to kick it too. But I think if it is fourth down, I think you have to kick the field goal. Well, I think so too. You need the scores anyway. It really doesn't matter when you get them, does it? Nope, you can get the three and the seven or the seven and the three. This is going to be close. short. Boy, this is tough to do. I think the Cowboys are going to go for it. Yep. Those guys are saying go for it. Everyone wants you to go for it, but I think in this situation, and you need 10, I think you take the three. Well, let's see. What would it be? Like a 45-yard field goal. Very little wind. They need about a foot. That's North Hecker who coaches the linebacker. San Francisco over with Bill Walsh Newsom and Jones the give this to Newsom and I don't know if he got it or not well if he wasn't down he's not going to get it
Kober with 11 and a half minutes remaining in the fourth. Ready. First down, 49ers with their own 39. Rice wide left. And Montana looking for Russ Francis, who has it. Chased by Jeff Rohr. Knocked out of bounds by Clint Scale. Put into Dallas territory. A gain of 13. I don't know if Clint Scale knocked Francis out of bounds or if Francis went out of bounds and then knocked Clint Scale. But Francis, he's going to be here. I, I think he goes out of bounds because he's out right now. And then doink. Down. No. First and ten. Montana back to throw. And going for Rice, and he's got him if he can get there. Victor Scott running with him, but Rice was pulling away. He is going to be a great receiver. Barring injury, he's going to be one of the best to ever play. Hey, you know, you talk about speed. Any guy that can run has two or three gears. You have one gear to get open, then you have another gear to separate or one by. Watch Rice separate from Victor Scott. That's a pretty big separation there. Had the ball just been just an inch less, that would have been a touchdown. He almost ran away from his own towel. Second and ten. Craig straight ahead for about four. Inside the Dallas 45, Don Smerick on the bottom of the pile. Jeff Coat there as well. You know, the 49ers have taken a lot of heat, and Joe Montana's taken a lot of heat, but really, football isn't consistent like it was last year. With all this blitzing and the defenses we see and going after them and penetration, it's hard to be that consistent quarterback. Joe Montana is still the statistical leader, still the Pro Bowl quarterback. Bill Walsh said it all revolves around Joe. Here's Randy White. Chasing Joe, and Joe's out of the pocket, and he gets it to Rice. And Rice is tripped up by Wall, but he gets down inside the Dallas 25. Hey, Joe Montana made that play on his escape because Randy White had him. Randy White had him with, with no blocker on him, coming right into him, but Montana always escapes to his right. Watch him. He feels the pressure there now. He gets, he does it now. He runs out to the right, and two completes that pass. How many times have you pictured Joe Montana scrambling out to his right and completing a big pass? If I were against him, I'd rather him stay in the pocket. Montana for Clark. Jim Funhorst, the 
younger of the two brothers. Is the one who made the tackle. First down, Cowboys. Cowboys will start from their own 25. Excuse me, John. Tell you one thing about these 49ers, you know, when you get down on them, when you get them going the way the Cowboys had them early, you have to put them away because if you get them any life, they still have great firepower. Here's Newsom working at tailback as Dorsett is out. Tory Nixon made the stop. A delighted at Joe Montana. Equally happy is Dwight Clark. You know, you talk about nemesis or whatever those guys are that cause other teams problems. That Clark has to be one for those Cowboys, doesn't it? He's like Mel Gray used to be against the Cowboys. When he was Randy the Cardinals. Bice there, he was saying, you know, I had him on that play before they got down where he could throw the play that made the touchdown. That's Newsom. That's Fowler in motion. This is Hogaboom back to throw. Gets it outside of Fowler. Todd Fowler lunging up to about the 35. Short of a first down. Or maybe he got it. I think it's going to be short. You know, I would bet of all the teams, you know, the Bears thinking about this and the year that they've had, like the 49ers had last year, I bet the one team that the Bears don't want to see in it is the 49ers. Because if you think of the teams that do things that can give the Bears trouble, I think you have to think of this team, the 49ers. Of course, they have some work to do. They have to win this game, then they have to go back to New York and beat the Giants before they would be able to play the Bears. The Giants looked good yesterday. Third and short. And they give this to Newsom. And this time, he will have the first down. And very nearly broke, away, broke out of the pack. Dana McLemore. I think Ronnie Lott, Ronnie Lott hurt his left arm or his left hand on that play. That thing, oh, yeah, they caught it right there. He just made contact with Newsom there in the hole. Didn't wrap his arms. It looks like he had something going there. Watch Ronnie Lott. 42, he comes up, makes the hit right there, and whatever it was, it was his left hand. Because watch him right now. He knows a left hand or finger on the left hand. 49er just barely got 10 men on the field, got 11 men on the field. They part. Nixon makes the stop. The penalty flag is down. There's Ronnie Lott. I think they ended up with 12 on the field, Pat. Did they? When Fred Dean came on at the last I minute? Think so. Illegal procedure. 12 men on the field. Right. Look at that secondary now. They've got McLemore and Nixon, the cornerbacks, and Dwight Hicks and Carlton Williamson, the safety men. They've already lost Eric Wright. Now they lose Lott. That'll hurt. They're still looking at Ronnie Lott over on the 49er bench. It's first and five for Dallas at their own 45. San Francisco leading 31-16. 7.51 left to play. Outside of Fowler. McLemore tackles him after a gain of a couple. Playoff situation. Fowler limps off now, or limps back to the huddle. The wild card game would appear to be San Francisco at New York next Sunday. And in the divisional playoffs, Dallas at Los Angeles. The wild card winner then, that of course all the next week, at Soldier Field in Chicago. Ronnie Lott still holding his thumb and headed for the locker room. Boom going for Poe. And out of bounds, covered by Nixon. There goes Ronnie Lott. I'm sure, I'm sure he has one of those fractures, you know, that, uh, you know, a spiral fracture or something where the bone comes through the skin because there is blood involved in that thing. And he's in obvious pain. Remember Daryl Green of the Redskins had one of those early in the year? And they can play, but it's amazing how much that big mitt that you have to wear affects your running and your mobility. 
and your whole balance thing and your tackling and, and being able to catch or grab or anything. It does. But of course, it's a lot easier for a defensive player. Remember when it happened to Phil Sims at that time. Right. Of course, the quarterback, that puts him out for the season. Third down. Hold the ball from the spread. Here comes the 49er blitz. They get it to Rimbro. Well, he loses it. And Dwight Hicks has it. And he's down at about the 49-yard line. Corey Nixon made the hit that knocked it loose from Rimbro. in the Cotton Bowl on CBS Sports. Hello. With winter setting in, some people are worried about drinking a wine cooler when they are a whole lot cooler than they'd like to be already. So Ed got himself a cooler warmer and has developed a warmer cooler. This is simply Bartles and James heated up along with a cinnamon stick. So if you live in Minnesota or Antarctica or someplace like that, stock up on Bartles and James. It is not only the best cooler cool, but also the perfect cooler for those who prefer a cooler warmer. Thank you for Hit your support. Hit by Dutton there, that the, that the knee went before he went down. Just buckled. I, I think it did. I don't think it happened here when he rolled over. I think when he got hit, I think that knee collapsed on him. You know, he's one of those guys that any charity, you know, that anything, any charity, he's the first guy there. Anyone wants anyone, they need a 49er player, Bill Ring is the guy. The golf tournament, everything. He gives as much of his time as any player in the league I know. Matt Cavanaugh is now the 49er quarterback. He's going right to work. And does to face Solomon. And Solomon gets inside the Cowboys 35 before Eugene Lockhart can bring it down. Looking ahead, a gain of 17. Wendell Tyler had arthroscopic knee surgery, what, a couple of weeks ago? Could he come back conceivably? Right, and he said that he could come back next week, and Bill Wall said yesterday he would expect that he could come back next week. Freddie Solomon, of course, thought there was a possibility that this could be his last game. Now it looks like when the playoffs start, Freddie Solomon will play some more. Herman brought down for a loss. Freddie Solomon was the last 49er introduced when they introduced the team before the game, and you should have heard the ovation that he got. Wide receiver. You can hear it. Number 88 playing his last regular season game for the 49ers and retiring from pro football, Freddie Solomon. comes in motion and they give to Harmon from behind by Bates 449 left to play now well Freddie Solomon he's retiring he's announced it he's playing his Done. his last game here in candlestick and they're gonna give him a penalty is it against Freddie? I think it is. I think he was coming on a crack back, and I think they're going to get him for some illegal block. Holding offense, number 88. <laughs> yep. Well, they did get him. You're not supposed to do that on the, on the day a guy retires. No sentiment. Here he is. There's Freddie. He's going to come in motion. He gets a block right in here, and that's what they call holding. 
It's not really much of a block. You see him come in motion here, comes down here. They're going to run inside him. Right here, he's just helping. He just gets his hands up there, not doing anyone any harm. No. Just, no harm, no foul. What what ever happened to that? Just staying out of the way there. On second down, they give to Harmon again. Chased by White. And down by Clinchgale and Smerich. And the clock is running. 60 minutes next, except on the West Coast, where you'll see it at its regular time. In its entirety. All 60 minutes. Third and 16. Somebody say earlier in this year to us that it, we had one guy so slow it took him an hour and a half to watch 60 minutes. Well, 60, yeah. <laughs> That's my type of guy. We understand that uh, Bill Ring is being x-rayed for a broken left ankle bone. Fibula. Here's Harmon. Stays on his feet. Finally stopped and knocked down by Dexter Clinchgale. A gain of 15. Looking ahead again, the 49ers this year have been a very good road team. They have to go to New York. They have to play the Giants at Giants Stadium. They are 5-3 and three on the road this year. You know, the Giants are another team. They weren't... Like the Redskins were watching to see if they got in the playoffs or not. The Giants, were they, they, they won yesterday. They know they're hosting the game. They didn't know who they were going to play. Well, they can start pulling out the films of the 49ers. Think back about the Giants season. They could very easily be 14-2 and two or something like that. Nobody beat them badly. Well, we got a fourth down situation here in the... And the, uh, the 49ers, I don't know what they were going to do. They just stayed in the huddle to take the penalty of too much time. Now, maybe they're going to do that and then put the punt team in, I would imagine. I would think so. Delay of game. Doesn't really matter to Runniger. In fact, he'd probably be rather be further back. Yeah, then they get a better angle at trying to get the ball out of bounds. Of course, the Cowboys can decline the penalty. So they'll back Runniger up. Gordon Banks goes back to the Cowboys to about the 10. Runniger will aim it for one of the sidelines. Or he might he might just down it. Clock is running still. 233 left to play. He may pooch it. That's, that sounds dangerous. I bet he goes to the right. He pooched it. Goes under it, has to dive for it to the 20. He might as well kick it out of the end zone, huh? Instead of messing around with pooching. Next Saturday, don't forget college football, the Sun Bowl at El Paso. Georgia against Arizona. That's live at 12:30 Eastern Time. And after that. Kentucky. That's basketball. NCAA on CBS. Kentucky against Louisville. It's been a long time since they liked each other. Banks slip wide to the right. Here's Hogaboom back to throw and gets it outside to Newsom. Newsom to the 30. About nine. Nixon on the tackle. Wendell Tyler on the sideline autographing a program. And again, there is the owner of the 49ers, Eddie DiBartolo Jr. Very happy about this situation, I'm sure. Wendell Tyler, as we said, hopes to be back next week. San Francisco 31, Dallas 16. Candlestick Park has not been, in recent years certainly, a friendly, happy place for Dallas to visit. Hogaboom from the shotgun. To Renfro. He gets out to the 47. Dana McLemore. Tackle him a gain of 17. No huddle for Dallas this time. Both teams have all 
three of their timeouts remaining. Overboom goes quickly. The flag is down. The pass is caught by Jones. He is down. Ferrari out there to make sure he stayed there. Producer Terry O'Neill, senior producer Charles H. Milton, the third, directed by Sandy Grossman. Thank you, thank you, Joan Vitrano, and a thanks to all the rest of our crew and a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday season to all of them, as well as all of you. It was a big cannon they just shot, wasn't it? was a roar that uh, that ripped through the whole place here where'd that come from I don't know they must have borrowed that from the college or something screen pass to Newsom three blockers in front Newsom gets enough for the first down the clock stays alive with a minute and 25 seconds left Keena Turner on the stop like the Cowboys will go to Anaheim to play the Rams 49ers will go cross country Intended for Renfro, he's hit by McLemore. Somebody must have hit her hard. Bill Walsh. What did Bill say about the nickel defense? He said it's a haunting thing for coaches. He used to like it, you know, when they didn't run that nickel and all those blitzes He's and they right. just played normal defense and you can script it. Now it's tough for you. You have your script, but it doesn't work. And then you make your adjustments and you come out and do it in the second half. And that's what he did today. Here's Hogaboom back to throw. Looking and throwing down the middle. It's Renfro again. He's at the 32-yard line. Boy, you can't say... Nobody can say that the Cowboys didn't play as well as they could play. And if Mike Renfro didn't give him a full day's work. He always does. Hogaboom fires it out of bounds. But, you know, there are certain individuals who haunt certain teams. Number 87 for San Francisco. This was the catch in 1982 in the championship game. And it was number 87. today watch number 87 same guy same uniform same result Dwight Clark from Joe Montana someone asked Dwight Clark why he had such amazing stamina and he said they examined him and he had unusually long lungs have you ever heard that before oh. to James Jones intended seconds left to play but I know that he does have amazing stamina I mean he's one of those guys he's a lot like uh, Roger Craig those guys that just turn on the clock when the practice starts and they just run all the way through it and they're still going strong at the end I mean, you watch him in a workout Dwight Clark I'm speaking of now and it looks like there's no way this guy's ever going to be a deep threat but two touchdown passes one of 49 crowd him and they take chances. Hogaboom firing for the end zone, and he's going to have it picked off by Tory Nixon. He was looking in the direction of Gordon Banks. And Eddie DiBartolo, the think, owner of the 49ers, is going to love it and does love it. I think they said that he was out of bounds, Pat. Oh, really? Look, look, he's explaining. He said, I had it. I had both feet inbounds. It's interesting what he said. When he joined the Redskins, I think you said before, the first thing they taught him was you have to hate the Cowboys to play for the Redskins. That's what he said. There's one foot down. Oh, nope, that second foot wasn't. Yeah, he said the first thing they said, uh, he was drafted by the Redskins, reported to the camp, and said, you hate the Cowboys. He said, well, I didn't know what I was supposed to say. He said, I didn't know if I did or not. I just said no. Oh, I saw it coming. Saw it coming. Dwight Hicks put a hat on Renfro. Not only has performed, he's tough. Redskins back in Virginia looking on. It started off as a happy day, but didn't finish.
finishes one. It's a happy day for these guys, eh? Last year's world champions, they're doing it, they're doing it the tough way this year. Well, John, you've been through it. It is tough to defend the Super Bowl championship. Well, it is. It's just tough to, you know, you, you relax in the offseason and you enjoy it, but then you don't have that same hunger to get ready for the next year. But I think they're starting to get it back now at the end of the season. Don't forget next 60 minutes. Except on the West Coast. 24 seconds remaining. Kavanaugh will just... It's Freddie Solomon. Freddie Solomon is the quarterback. They'll let him run out the clock. He always wanted to be a quarterback. And he got to play his last regular season play as a quarterback. Now he wants the ball. And he got it. That trophy will be around for a long, long time in the Solomon household. The last play of regular season, he finally got to play quarterback. Well, of course, he was a college quarterback at Tampa, so he came into pros as a quarterback. He's going out as one. Coming up next, the NFL Today, the wrap-up show. 